Hello, and welcome to the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit's Endwalker Caster DPS preview. This video is possible thanks to Square Enix, who generously gave us early access to an in-development build of Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Due to the early nature of this build, information in this video may be subject to change. This video covers changes to Black Mage, Red Mage, and Summoner, with Summoner in particular seeing an almost complete rework of its core job mechanics. Please note that due to changes in battle calculations, potency values no longer reflect their current counterparts, and direct comparisons will not be discussed in this video. Caster role actions remain mostly the same as before, with the exception of the Black Mage spell Sleep now becoming available to Red Mages and Summoners. Addle has also changed, now reducing magical damage dealt by 10% and physical damage dealt by 5%. Black Mage continues to evolve with explosive new skills and quality of life improvements, giving players extra mobility options and ensuring low-level gameplay now more closely reflects the in-game experience. Thunder 2's damage over time is now a little weaker compared to its upgrade, Thunder 4, but has had its duration increased to 18 seconds. Combined with Thundercloud procs now lasting 21 seconds, Black Mages will need to devote less time to maintaining their damage over time spells. In the same vein, Firestarter's duration has been increased from 18 to 30 seconds. Breeze has moved to level 40, granting 3 Umbral Hearts instead of 1 from level 58 onwards, and it no longer grants Umbral Ice 3. To compensate, Fire 3 and Blizzard 3 are now learned together at level 35. Flare has been weakened slightly compared to other fire spells, now having its damage boosted by the new High Fire 2 mentioned later. Both Freeze and Flare no longer mention removing Astral Fire or Umbral Ice respectively, but this may be subject to change. Finally, Foul becomes an instant cast spell at level 80, through a new trait gained at the same time as Xenoglossy. With all of the old stuff out of the way, let's get into the new abilities you'll be picking up as a Black Mage. At level 82, two spells become available. High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2. These spells replace Fire 2 and Blizzard 2, doing slightly more damage while granting Astral Fire 3 and Umbral Ice 3 respectively. High Fire 2 also applies Enhanced Flare, which can be stockpiled twice and expended to boost the power of your next Flare cast. Gained at level 86, Amplifier is an instant cast off global cooldown ability that generates a single stack of Polyglot when used under the effect of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. Coupled with Foul's instant cast time, this allows Black Mages to deal significant damage while remaining mobile. Finally, Black Mages level 90 action is the single target damage spell, Paradox, which can be used while under the effects of the Paradox buff gained through the Aspect Mastery 5 trait. This buff is gained by switching from Astral Fire 3 to Umbral Ice, or vice versa while 3 Umbral Hearts are active. When cast under Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, Paradox refreshes their duration while providing a 40% chance to grant Firestarter and Astral Fire, or requiring no MP in Umbral Ice. Two new traits are learned between level 80 and 90. Enhanced Mana Font at level 84 reduces Mana Font's cooldown to 120 seconds. Enhanced Sharp Cast 2 at level 88 turns Sharp Cast into a 2 charge ability on a 30 second cooldown. Beyond these, Black Mage's traits remain largely unchanged, with two notable exceptions, Aspect Mastery and Enochian. Aspect Mastery, previously learned at level 72, is now available from level 1 and grants a stack of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice on casting Fire or Blizzard respectively, with an additional stack gained at level 20 and level 35. While under their effects, casting any spell of the opposite element still consumes no MP, applying Shadowbringer's improvements to the entire leveling process. Enochian has undergone a major change. Now a trait which provides a 5% damage increase when under the effect of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, upgrading to 10% and 15% damage increases at level 70 and 78 as before. At level 86, Black Mages learn Enhanced Enochian 3 improving Enochian's damage buff to 20%. Ultimately, Black Mage isn't changing much in Endwalker, with the majority of changes streamlining gameplay while adding extra spikes of damage through Amplifier and Paradox. 
Black Mage wasn't broken after all, so the dev team have wisely avoided trying to fix it. Red Mage continues to refine the mechanics set out during Stormblood, balancing black and white mana to access high damage attacks, with only moderate changes that compromise neither its versatility nor its vermilion identity. Don't worry, Red Mages. No skills have been removed in the transition to Endwalker. However, the black and white mana costs of many abilities have been reduced with several corresponding reductions in the mana generated by spells. Most importantly, great improvements have been made to the AoE rotation, with the Red Mage's most powerful attacks now accessible through both single target and AoE skill use. Jolt and Jolt 2's mana gain has been decreased from 3 to 2, Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow are decreased from 11 to 6, and Ver Fire and Ver Stone are reduced from 9 to 5. Scatter, Impact, Ver Arrow 2, and Ver Thunder 2 see no change. Korakor is now a two-charge ability, with engagement and displacement now equal in potency and gaining second charges through a new trait at level 72. Manification now provides a flat increase of 50 to both mana types, and restores one charge to Korakor, displacement, and engagement. Its damage boosting effect has also changed, extending its duration and adding six stacks at level 90 through the Enhanced Manification 2 trait. These stacks enhance magic damage by 5% for the next skill used. Last but not least, Embolden receives its first ever change, now increasing all damage dealt by nearby party members instead of just physical, with the rate and falloff remaining unchanged. It still only increases your own magic damage, however, and will sadly not buff Flesh or Contrasixt. A key part of Red Mage's changes is the addition of Mana Stack at level 68, which serves to simplify the process for enabling Verflare and Verholy. Each hit of the Enchanted Melee combo or a single use of Enchanted Moulinet adds a Mana Stack to the job gauge, with three stacks allowing Verflare and Verholy to be cast. These Mana Stacks must be generated and spent consecutively as any disruption to the combo causes the gauge to reset. The enchanted versions of Ripos, Zerkal, and Redoblema now decrease the balance gauge by 20, 15, and 15 respectively, allowing the completion of the full melee combo with only 50 black and white mana. With the changes made to Manification, Red Mages will now be able to open fights with their full high damage combo. Enchanted Moulinet's cost has not changed, meaning 3 uses will still cost 60 of each mana. Verholi and Verflare are now AoE spells granting 11 of their respective mana type instead of 21. Along with Scorch, also now an AoE spell with its mana gain decreasing from 7 to 4, they allow for a powerful magic combo, useful against one foe or many. Starting at level 82, Red Mages learn the Red Magic Mastery 2 trait, replacing Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow with their slightly more powerful counterparts, Ver Thunder 3 and Ver Arrow 3. Red Magic Mastery 3 is then learned at level 84, which further upgrades the potency of Ver Thunder 2, Ver Arrow 2, Ver Fire, Ver Stone, Jolt 2, Impact, and Enchanted Reprise. Level 86 grants Magic Barrier, a shield that reduces magic damage taken by 10% and increases healing received by 5% for the caster and nearby party members. With a duration of just 10 seconds, this seems primed for use during big party-wide damage mechanics like boss transitions. Enhanced Acceleration learned at level 88 upgrades Acceleration into a 2-charge ability, allowing for 6 guaranteed procs of Ver Thunder Ready and Ver Arrow Ready in a pinch. With a cooldown of just 55 seconds per charge, Red Mages should have no trouble maximizing their mana gains in each 120 second window. Finally, at level 90, Red Mages learn Resolution, a powerful line AoE dealing heavy unaspected damage and increasing both black and white mana by 4. This spell requires you to land Scorch beforehand and serves as a big finisher to the Red Mages high damage combo. 
Like Black Mage, the core gameplay of Red Mage hasn't changed much in Endwalker, with the exception of its significantly improved AoE rotation. Lower mana costs and more ways to generate it ensure the flashy combos will be coming out more often, which as we all know is what Red Mages ver live for. Best of all, there's twice as many chances to backflip out of the boss arena, so have fun with that! To say Summoner has been reworked is an understatement, with many core abilities changed or outright removed. In their place, the job has been reborn, changing from 2.0's pet-based style to something more akin to the Summoners of Final Fantasy III. Yoshi P was not kidding when he said, <laughs> yep, you heard him. For starters, all damage over time spells and their associated traits have been removed, with Bane also getting the chop, while Fester now deals consistent damage at the cost of one Aetherflow charge. Eggy Assault skills are also gone, replaced wholesale by the new summoning mechanics we'll get into later. Ruin spells fare better, with cast times reduced to 1.5 seconds where applicable. This adjustment allows for more weaving space, improved mobility, and no caster tax animation lock when casting. After much debate within the dev team, Resurrection lives on by the skin of its teeth, surviving with no changes made to its function. And Kindle has now become a trait learned at level 50, now upgrading the special attacks of your Eggies into more powerful versions. Pet AI for Demi Bahamut and Demi Phoenix have improved considerably, now fixing themselves in one spot and only attacking when the summoner attacks. Now that they don't have to worry about their giant dragon buddy losing interest and turning around mid-fight, summoners can move around the battlefield at will without worrying about lost DPS. Outburst Remains is an AoE spell, now learned at level 26, with the Outburst Mastery trait learned at level 74 upgrading it into Tri-Disaster, itself now a slightly stronger AoE spell after what must be its third or fourth rework. The remaining additions and changes to the summoner job are so extensive that we'll be looking at them in four separate sections, Aetherflow, Ruin, Demi Summoning, and Primal Summoning. Aetherflow remains intact, with a few significant adjustments to better pair with the Primal Summoning mechanic. In addition to dealing damage and granting two Aetherflow charges, Energy Drain now activates further Ruin for 60 seconds allowing the summoner to cast the new Area of Effect Ruin 4. Pain Flare remains largely unchanged, but is now learned at level 40 instead of 52. In its place, Energy Siphon moves to level 52 and continues to function as an AoE version of Energy Drain, including activating further Ruin through the new Enhanced Energy Siphon trait. Between Fester and Pain Flare, Aetherflow is the primary source of the summoner's off-global cooldown damage in Endwalker. The Ruin spell will continue its role as your base spell. In addition to the previously mentioned changes in cast time, Ruin 2 is now a direct upgrade to Ruin at level 30, with both being buffed for 15 seconds by the newly added Aether Charge ability, in addition to its effects discussed later. To compensate for having a cast time now, Ruin 2 is significantly stronger than its predecessor. At level 54, Ruin 2 upgrades into Ruin 3, gaining higher damage and it further improves at level 84 through the new Ruin Mastery 4 trait. Ruin 4, as mentioned earlier, is now an AoE spell that can be cast when under the effect of Further Ruin. Due to the removal of Eggy Assault abilities, only one stack of Further Ruin can be gained every 60 seconds, but Ruin 4 has received a significant bump in strength to compensate. Demi Bahamut and Demi Phoenix have seen a few changes remaining part of Summoner's core mechanics in between phases of the new Primal Summoning. Both Demi Summons have also had their durations reduced from 20 to 15 seconds, contrary to the tooltips on screen, which we expect to be fixed before final release. Dreadworm Trance has been completely changed, no longer granting stacks of Dreadworm Aether and instead changing Ruin 3 and Outburst or tri Disaster into more powerful instant cast spells, Astral Impulse and Astral Flare respectively. Using Dreadworm Trance also applies a buff of the same name, 
changing the effect of the new Astral Flow spell into the classic Death Flare. Astral Flow can be one of five spells depending on the summoner's position in their rotation, and as it ties closely with Primal Summoning, we'll come back to it later. At level 70, the Enhanced Dreadworm Trance trait replaces Dreadworm Trance with Summon Bahamut, allowing Demi Bahamut to be brought straight to the field without prerequisites. Worm Wave remains the same as before, casting several times over the course of Demi Bahamut's duration. Demi Phoenix functions similarly as before, becoming available once Demi Bahamut has returned from summoning. Hellish Conduit has been removed removing the need to alternate between Fountain of Fire and Brand of Purgatory, while both skills have had their potencies adjusted to align with Astral Impulse and Astral Flare. Astral Flow changes to the new ability Rekindle while Demi Phoenix is present. Rekindle provides an on-demand heal to either the caster or a party member, with additional healing over time triggering when either the target's HP falls below 50% or the duration ends. Enkindle Bahamut and Enkindle Phoenix cast Aquamorn and Revelation respectively as before, with a shiny new 8 second cooldown ensuring you can still fit 2 casts in for summoning. Their damage reduction for nearby enemies has also been increased from 50 to 60% to fall in line with other similar abilities. The Star of the Show this significant addition to Summoner will finally allow you to summon a Primal at level 90 and utilize its Aether in your spells. Pets no longer auto-attack and act mainly as a catalyst for other abilities, and while pet actions will still be available for convenience, pre-positioning your pets near the boss will no longer be necessary for optimization's sake. The main summoning skills require the presence of Carbuncle, who can be brought forth from level 2 onwards. Radiant Aegis has also learned at this level, commanding Carbuncle to create a barrier around the caster that absorbs damage totaling 20% of your maximum HP, eventually gaining a second charge through a new trait at level 88. Summoners also gain Searing Light at level 66, increasing damage dealt by the caster and nearby party members by 3% for 30 seconds. In addition to its other effects, Aether Charge grants you a Ruby Arcanum when learned at level 6, with Topaz Arcanum added at level 15, and Emerald Arcanum added at level 22. The skill is eventually replaced by Dreadworm Trance at level 58, continuing to grant all three Arcanum in addition to its other effects. Summoning works in roughly the same way throughout the leveling process. A corresponding skill for each Arcanum, beginning with Summon Ruby, Summon Topaz, and Summon Emerald, conjures an elemental ally who uses their signature attack. The summoner is then granted stacks of elemental attunement, which can be spent to cast single target and area of effect damaging spells. Once all of the elemental attunement has been used, the next summon can be used until all three arcanum are expended, allowing the summoner to generate more with Aether Charge, Dreadworm Trance, Summon Bahamut, or Summon Phoenix. Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald Carbuncles deal damage with their signature attacks, and grant two or four stacks of elemental attunement, and then leave allowing the casting of the single target Gemshine and AoE Precious Brilliance. Afrit, Titan, and Garuda Eggies then replace their elemental carbuncles through traits learned at level 30, 35, and 45 respectively. Besides their signature attack getting stronger, their functionality remains the same until Elemental Mastery is learned at level 86. This trait morphs Astral Flow into three different skills by expending Afrit, Titan, or Garuda's Favor. Afrit and Garuda's Favor are granted when summoned, while Titan's Favor isn't earned until you cast the Topaz Rite and Topaz Catastrophe skills. We can only assume he's much harder to please. Speaking of which, level 72's Ruin Mastery 3 trait upgrades Gemshine into Ruby, Topaz, or Emerald Rite according to the summoner's active attunement. This is where the characteristics of each summon begin to form. Efreet's Ruby Rite is a powerful single target spell with a comparatively long cast time of 2.8 seconds, perfect for moments of relative calm. Astral Flow is upgraded to Crimson Cyclone, a melee ability that causes the summoner to dash to their target and smack them with a book, which can be followed up with Crimson Strike for an additional AoE damage. Garuda's Emerald Rite is a weaker but instant cast spell that helps the summoner retain mobility during hectic fights, while her Astral Flow grants Slipstream. This wide AoE ability deals heavy damage and continues to damage any enemies who enter the area for 12 seconds. 
Titan's Topaz Rite, on the other hand, grants a stack of Titan's Favor with each use, in addition to its instant cast single target damage, allowing Astral Flow to be used after every cast. The summoner will therefore be weaving Mountain Busters between each cast of Topaz Rite, similar to a Gunbreaker's continuation skills. Precious Brilliance receives the same treatment with the trait Outburst Mastery, which grants access to Ruby, Topaz, or Emerald's Catastrophe at level 82. These spells all function similarly to their single target counterparts besides being appropriately weaker in dealing area of effect damage. Finally, all three right spells receive a final upgrade alongside Ruin 3 through Ruin Mastery 4 available at level 84 which increases their potency. The reworked skills have finally fulfilled the wishes of many players who yearn for a version of Summoner that plays and feels more like classic Final Fantasy Summoners. While the removal of damage over time spells may be a point of contention for some, it undoubtedly eases the complexity of the job in light of the new primal summoning mechanics. With any luck, this might signal the end of constant reworks and lay a new foundation for even more exciting summons in the future. This concludes the caster changes for Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. We'd like to hear what you think about these changes. Which casters are you most excited for? Will you be finishing the epic of Hydaelyn and Zodiac as one of these casters? Please leave a comment on Reddit and let us know. Oh, and we forgot! Physic! That still exists, and it's still terrible. Thanks for watching!